little bit of time so we can jump into, I guess, our, our deeper topic. We'll spend a few minutes on at least. Uh, there's this article on Wired, uh, Amazon's dark secret, and it has failed to protect your data. Um, I would say brace yourself because this was a long read. Uh, it took a while to even load on my computer, and then I scrolled and closed it like three times before I sat down and actually read it because it was that long. But there was a, a lot of little interesting clips. Not all of it. Some of it's user privacy. Privacy. Some of it is, I would say, Amazon negligence amongst their employees. Some of it is kind of shady behavior. There's a little bit of kind of everything in here. Um, the article is obviously always a little click, clickbaity, but there is a good amount of information. Uh, but definitely some some nuggets of truth um, in there that kind of got exposed. So this memo from 2018 that we've got on the screen here, um, more than half of third-party developers the company had researched were violating Amazon's terms of service, basically. Um, uh, basically, the rules were for how sellers and developers were supposed to use the system um, uh, based on customer orders and, and data and things like that. So clearly, I would say negligence or maybe just a lack of care or kind of like turning a blind eye. Um, it's kind of like when uh, when Bezos was on uh, testifying with uh, Congress and he was like, I don't think we look at, you know, uh, purchase data for uh, co for competitors before coming up with a product. And he's like, I don't know. That's not our policy. But just because something's not a policy or like maybe your policy is not to do something great. But you could like wink, wink, you know, officially on paper. We're not supposed to do this. But, you know, if you if you're on the team and you're told, you know, figure it out at all costs, wink, wink, there's this tool you could probably use. But. I didn't tell you to do it, then it's against policy. And, you know, you can basically shift blame from, you know, a few bad, from leadership to a few bad actors, which I think is kind of a good theme of this entire thing um, where it goes through a lot. Was there certain segments that stuck out to you guys more than others? Because I don't want to rant too much, but um, figure if there's... I mean, uh, I couldn't even get through the entire article. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's <laughs> but, you know, yeah. part of it uh, tells... You know, that's what happens when, when the company gets really, really big. What They have over a million employees now. And there's no way yeah. a, a single person or even a, a team or a group can uh, understand what's going on with all the data out there, especially when you have so many teams. Uh, remember, Amazon had this rule where you cannot have large teams out yeah. there. On the, two pizzas. Two, two, two pizza rule. So with that, there are going to be a lot of teams and they'll need this data. And very soon, you quickly you know, run out of control, and that's what's that's what's happened here. I think you know, a million plus employees. You know, yeah, there's no way they, they can have so, control of this. So out of that billion, that might be like three quarters is probably fulfillment and delivery, right? So yeah. outside of like maybe mm -hmm. corporate environment, it must have been Even Amazon month because Fast Company <laughs> had this Amazon unpacked, and I, I, you mentioned the the amount of employees, so. What? What? Did, how many? Let's take a take a guess. How many do you say you say they have? Because I I have a number here. Oh, over a million. One one point two million is my guess. Okay. Ooh. What pages? You got a guess there? Yeah, total count. That sounds about right. Okay. I'll I mean, take the fact that the fact that they've added about hundred hundred thousand uh, employees this past year, you know, yeah. generally 10, 10, 20 percent addition. Uh, yeah, ten percent addition sounds about right. Okay, you, very close. So, accord, and this was this month's fast company. So, as of whenever they printed this thing, one million three hundred and thirty-five thousand number of full-time and part-time Amazon employees globally, excluding contractors and temporary personnel. Oh. Wow, could that, be one. That bumps yeah. <laughs> uh, up to one point six. One hundred and fifty percent. Annual turnover rate of Amazon's hourly associates reportedly. 150% so turnover? 150, 150% annual turnover rate of Amazon's hourly associates reportedly. How can you have over 100%? So that's turnover. a lot of different people coming in every year. <laughs> or, I that's mean, maybe, maybe that means like you get hired and you stay for three months and you quit, and then the next person came for three months and quit. Then that's how you get over 100%. Turnover, right? Basically, people are multiple people are quitting within a year, which is <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bad. Uh, pretty bad situation. Yeah, I'm trying general. to see if there's any other. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Here's one. Four hundred and sixty percent increase during the pandemic of employees who applied to the Amazon Technical Academy, an upskilling program that helps employees become software engineers in nine months. 
So I mean, the 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 scale that they operate on is unheard of. Yeah. Really. Uh, yeah, I think it'll likely end up uh, being split into multiple multiple companies, and uh, that is now becoming, uh, I guess, a trend. Uh, G splitting, we have seen, and now Toshiba are splitting. Mm. There's another company, I think, that's going down. Johnson down Johnson. Down. Johnson and Johnson. So there are a few others uh, in that, and it makes sense because uh, of the crazy valuations. Uh, every every company is now a billion dollar company, yeah, right? I think uh, this week I've seen Grammarly, you know, thirteen billion, <laughs> thirteen billion. For comparison, mm. Dropbox is 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 about wow. ten, and and Box is about two. So three somewhere around that. So with all the crazy valuations, everyone will will check in. Recently, I had some some other company, an irrelevant industry that basically said uh, we are getting into EV market and their market cap doubled or tripled overnight or some such thing. Just so, by saying that. By, by saying <laughs> that. So so tomorrow, if, if let's say Grammarly says we are getting into EV market, expect it to be a hundred billion company. <laughs> so I think Amazon, uh, it, it, given the current market and uh, valuations, it makes sense to Amazon for Amazon to split into multiple companies, at least for add some, to bring in some sanity. Otherwise, yeah, it's, it's too big. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, uh, the first slide uh, Brent had, sorry, uh, was I think the most telling, right? One of, one of them said, according to internal documents, Amazon vast empire of customer data has become so sprawling, fragmented, and promiscuously shared within the company, the security division couldn't even map all of it, much less, much less adequately defend its border. So like, as the company grows to that size, you're going to have, you know, the amount of compliance and controls you can have, obviously start going out the window, right? Like all these different teams and of 10, 12, it's hard to manage. And I think uh, in one of the early episodes, uh, you were talking about trying to grab your Amazon data, right? And it took them forever to even yeah. get to it. Well, this is the reason. <laughs> yeah. And just, just some other kind of the amount of data that they're dealing with. Um, there, there's a, this, Am uh, this fast company, it says Amazon a pack from A to Z. So every section starts with, you know, a letter. Oh, uh, wow. So... Yeah, so it goes literally from A to Z. I, I'm on F for fakes, and it says, as Amazon grows, so does its b uh, battle against fraudsters facing pressures from shoppers, brands, and Congress and in following instances in which customers, listen to this, in which customers died or were injured by products that didn't meet government safety standards. The company destroyed more than 2 million counterfeit products in 2020 alone and blocked more than 10 billion suspect listings that the, the data and it's not just the amount of data it's the disparate places it's coming from you know they've got hundreds of thousands of sellers and they have to try to keep track of them in addition to the stuff that they do <sighs> yeah i can see where you know amazon is faced with a lot of things that maybe they who, who could have foreseen when they first initially started doing it? It's the scale that makes it hard to even keep track of all this stuff, like Raju was saying. There was one article I read earlier about the returns. I think it's a fascinating read where it is yep. cheaper to you know not burn. take the item back or even yeah. burn them instead of trying to even return them. And the logistics yep. of, of that is, is scary. So we have optimized this entire thing for uh, you know certain uh, supply chain things. Uh, I think those are all going to be reset, uh, you know, in the next decade or two. I think we are going to see, and with the current supply chain challenges and, and the global reset that's going on, uh, we're going to the entire supply chain industry is going to go through a massive shift. All of a sudden, now it's becoming cheaper to to use uh, air freight than than bring in a container, and yeah. that that has implications. Yeah, I think the only saving grace is like as these like the few like uh, the most biggest companies like your Amazon, Facebook, Google's. You kind of hope that there's like some level of incompetence as they get so big that that's the only thing like holding them back from probably truly doing scary stuff. Uh, they're just like moving slowly because they're probably fragmented and have a lot to deal with. But you know, if it was a little bit more of a well-oiled machine. I think we would be in a lot scarier situation. So that's kind of a well, I think, blessing in disguise a little bit, right? <laughs> when 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 you lose control and and uh, it's and you don't want to be associated with it, then then the founder leaves. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or what happened to? <laughs> 
Uh, it might be a little harsh, but uh, that's I, that's what I he, see. He goes to space. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm no the Amazon. You know, after Page left, you know the the real uh, Google showed up. Yeah. You know? uh, so uh, okay. after <laughs> after Bezos left, the real Amazon who who maximize the all the information and the data and everything that they had, they'll maximize and and suck everything out of it. And uh, I think we are entering that phase of Amazon. It becomes, uh, if anything, I expect Amazon to explode even even bigger, even further. Oof. Wow. Okay. We uh, we we we're at eleven forty eight. We really we could keep <laughs> talking all day on this stuff, but I guess we got to figure out when it's to take a time out for the week. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 